Hey guys, Richard Holden here and welcome to the channel. Here's a question. If you've got a turbo motor, is it necessary to have ported heads or an intake upgrade? Or can you just turn up the boost? And if you do, how much does it take? In this video, we're going to compare the effect of making performance modifications like ported cylinder heads or ported intake manifolds to just cranking up the boost on your turbo motor. Not only that, I'm going to show you how far you have to crank up the boost to offset the gains you would have got if you would have made those modifications. And just to go down the rabbit hole a little bit further, I'm going to show you that it takes a different amount of boost based on the power up of your naturally aspirated motor. Is everyone confused? You won't be after you watch the video. Let's check it out. To understand why it's not all the time necessary to for you to upgrade your intake manifold or cylinder heads on your combination before putting boost on, we're going to show you the difference between what those upgrades are worth, obviously, and what just running extra boost is worth. But before we can do that, obviously, we have to show you what it what a typical intake manifold test is worth. And the problem with that is that the intake manifold upgrade is going to depend an awful lot on what you're starting with and what you're ending with. So I'm going to show you like on an LS application, this is probably the biggest kind of gain that you would see from an intake manifold because the motor, the test motor already had basically everything that it needed going for it. And then we saddled it with a stock LS1 manifold and then replaced that with a fast LSXR manifold. And that's a really good upgrade, especially when it already has displacement, which this one was a six liter. It already had a good size cam in it. It had compression. It had high flowing cylinder heads. So basically it was only lacking the intake manifold. So this is about as good as you're going to get from an intake manifold change. So this was our six liter, uh, modified six liter, the camshaft that we ran in. It was a Comp 469, which is a 617, 624 lift, a 231, 247 degree duration split, 113 degree lobe separation angle. And we had airflow research, uh, LSX, the 230 V2 heads, and so those work really well. So this was a good modified 6 liter. We ran it with a stock LS1 intake manifold and stock throttle body. It made 535 horsepower. And then we installed the fast LSXR with a 102 millimeter throttle body. And so naturally, we got a big gain. It went all the way up to 591 horsepower. Torque was up quite a bit, up to 540. Five horse or 505 foot pounds. And you can see we kind of gain power everywhere. Now the LS1 manifold is the worst possible combination or the worst possible factory intake manifold, and the fast is probably one of the best in this RPM range for this kind of combination. So this is as good as it gets. If you were to test this on a 4.8 or a 5.3, especially a mild one, you're not going to get these kinds of gains. It's going to be quite a bit less. In fact, you may only get 10 or 15 horsepower over you know a truck manifold or a trailblazer ss so all of that stuff is going to kind of be in the middle but this gives us a fairly good idea and this is a difference of about 56 horsepower so we'll see how much boost it takes to equal that gain of 56 horsepower and as we know that would be the biggest gain that you get from the intake most of them would be less now that we've taken a look at what an intake manifold upgrade might be worth, we can take a look at what a cylinder head upgrade might be worth. And this, again, like with the intake, this is going to vary all over the place. I mean, I've run ported head tests on an otherwise stock motor that only showed 5 or 10 horsepower. And that's not because the ported head doesn't work. It's just because it doesn't have enough motor underneath it or the, or the stock head was already good enough to support the power output of the stock motor. It was more than enough in that case. It was an LS3. And putting a ported version on, all it did was make a, a cylinder head that would already support 650 horsepower. Now it can support 750, but the motor's not even making 500. So it had no problem doing that. So the amount of gain that you get from a cylinder head upgrade is going to vary dramatically with the kind of motor that you're testing it on. But I'll give you a fairly good idea. This was done when I ran a big cylinder head test. These were all cathedral port heads on an LS. And what we did was run this thing with a stock LS1 first. And we're going to show some fairly good gains from a cylinder head upgrade because the motor, like the previous test run on the intake manifold, was set up so that it could take advantage of what these cylinder heads had to offer. So it was a 408 stroker. It was an aluminum motor. It had a comp uh, 624 lift. 239, 247 degree duration, so a good size camshaft, 114 degree LSA. 
inch and seven eighths headers and we had the um fast intake manifold on this thing so we ran it first with a set of stock ls1 heads the 241 castings and our 408 produced 550 horsepower 549.6 and 517 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we put, I'll show you a couple of different ones, but this was basically a ported set of 243 heads, so a factory set of LS6 heads done by the guys at Total Engine Airflow. They really know what they're doing. These things flow a lot. And the power output jumped to over 600 horsepower. So we picked up, you know, 57 horsepower from the ported stock heads, the ported 243 heads, and then to give you an idea, we can get even more from other kinds of heads. This was the Dart Pro 1. That thing made 613 horsepower. So it picked up a total of uh, 63 horsepower. So again, from with the right heads on the right combination, you can pick up 50, 60 horsepower. So this gives us an idea now how much we're going to have to turn the boost up. The one final thing I want to look at now before we start talking about the turbo stuff is, and before we go to the whiteboard, is we need to take a look at camshafts. And there's a lot to talk about there. So our final comparison is interesting, and this shows us how much camshafts are worth. And all of these were tested on LS applications, but you could also do this on a small block Ford, a small block Chevy, big block Ford and Chevys, you know, late model Hemis, all kinds of things. And the one thing that's interesting in relation to the camshaft versus a turbo and turning the boost up is that I almost always recommend camshafts for any sort of upgrade. If, if you're going to upgrade your 5-liter Mustang, and you're going to put a turbo on it or a modular motor or a coyote. Uh, coyote might be the exception, but I would recommend you put camshafts in those. Cams and springs are usually an upgrade that I recommend, definitely with LS stuff. Now you can run the factory camshaft with boost and it works well. It will be very mild. It's not gonna make a ton of power because the boost is just gonna multiply what's there. So camshaft is always one of the upgrades usually that I, that I recommend for a turbo application because the gains that you get from the camshaft are then multiplied under boost but let's take a look and see what a camshaft can be worth on these kinds of applications and this was tested on an ls3 basically a stock ls3 crate motor and we ran it with the factory ls3 cam we did have a valve spring upgrade it did have long tube headers and we ran it with the holly hp management system as we always do and run the way that we test it with headers and, and no accessories and no inlet and an optimized tune this thing made 496 horsepower 491 foot-pounds of torque with the factory LS3 cam. Now here's what happened when we put, uh, this is this was the comp, or this is a BTR cam. So we uh, pushed the power up to 570 horsepower. This was a prototype of a BTR cam that I did some testing way back long ago and made 522 foot-pounds. But this is pretty, give you a pretty good idea on what happens if you do a cam upgrade on an LS3, the nice thing about the LS3 is it's got displacement, it's got compression, it's got plenty of head flow, it's got a really good intake manifold. Really, it's only missing the camshaft. So you can get some fairly good gains. We got more than 70 horsepower from this combination. And depending on what cam you start with and what cam you end with and what the combination is that you're testing it on, I've done tests where we've gotten more than 100 horsepower from a camshaft. In fact, I did one test where we got 175 horsepower from a camshaft because we started with such a mild, in that case, it was an, uh, a factory LM7 cam, which is the mildest of all the factory cams. And then we put a fairly big cam in, and also it was a 408 stroker just wanting a lot more camshaft. So when we gave it that, you know, it picked up a, a, a ridiculous amount of power. That doesn't mean that every camshaft is worth that, but this is kind of more indicative of what you'll see. 70 horsepower, 60, 70 horsepower on an LS3, pretty normal. You can also get really good gains. We've done 100 horsepower stuff on some of the Cathedral Port stuff. When you're starting out with, like I said, the factory LM7 cam is very, very mild. So you get even bigger gains when you're putting camshafts on those applications. But this gives us a pretty good idea of what a cam is worth. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we just turn up the boost.
after taking a look at the power gains offered by the intake manifold and the solar head, obviously we have to take a look at what the power gains offered by boost. So we have a 4.8 liter LS, and this had a mild cam from JFR. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here, but we can take a look and see. It was a 595 lift, 224, 228 degree duration, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. This thing had a small dome forged piston in it. It was a stock block, stock crank, stock Gen 4 rods, stock 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade, and a stock truck intake mount. So basically a cammed 4.8 liter, if you will. It made 400, just over 400 horsepower, 401 horsepower, 369 foot-pounds. And here's what happened when we added boost from a single turbo in this case. It was intercooled. We had a 85. It was a VS Racing 7875. You know, you kind of your quintessential go-to thousand horsepower kind of turbo. And here's what happened when we added 6.3 pounds. And I just want to show you real quickly what happens, you know, as we go up and boost. Uh, naturally, we get more and more power. These are all gains of about two pounds. So we're looking at over 700 horsepower on the Turbo 48. And this is with, oh, I lost my lost my lighting there for just a second. So we went from 6 to 12 pounds, basically 6.3 to 12.3 pounds. But what I want to show you is that, obviously, as we go up and boost, we start making more and more power. And we'll talk about that a little bit on the whiteboard and talk about how much boost on this it takes to overcome gains that you might get if you did uh, cylinder heads or intake manifold upgrades. Now, obviously, the important thing to remember is if you do those, you're going to make even more power at a lower boost. So you have the multiplier effect. So they're definitely beneficial. But as, we sh as we've shown here, and we can just keep going up and up and boost here and get to the limit of this turbo, and there's no need for us to do other than the camshaft and springs, there's no reason to put an intake manifold on this. There's no reason to put ported heads on this because we can get to the limit of the turbo with what's there. If we want to find out how much boost it takes basically to overcome the other modifications, why you don't need to do an intake upgrade or upgrade the cylinder heads on your combination, we obviously have to know how much power you get per pound of boost. And a lot of people incorrectly think, well, it's because if you put a big turbo on it, then you get more horsepower per pound of boost. Really, the determining factor of how much power you get per pound of boost from each pound of boost from your turbo combination is actually the power output of the naturally aspirated motor that you're starting with. So for instance, if we use extreme examples, we'll understand this a little better. My little Chevy Sprint turbo motor would only get about three or four, or sometimes five horsepower per pound of boost because it was only making 70 or 80 horsepower. <laughs> but uh, by contrast, if you have a six or seven or 800 horsepower big block that you're starting with and it makes that much power NA, you're gonna get a lot more power per pound of boost. So what I wanna show you is, some very common examples and you guys can plug in your own numbers here and it's very easy to use. So we'll take a look. We've got a number of columns here. The first column is basically, this is the power output of your NA motor that you're starting with. So if you're starting with a 300 horsepower motor, you're going to get about 20 horsepower per pound of boost. And it's a really easy thing. All you have to do is take the NA power output and I'm showing you down here in the corner. If you take the NA power output, divide it by 14.7, that will tell you how much horsepower you make per pound of boost. Because we know that if we if we run 14.7 pounds of boost and everything is right, we can double the power output of our NA motor. So if we divide the our NA power output by 14.7, we find out how much we get in for each one of those pounds of boost. Now, it's not exactly like that in, in the real world because each pound of boost isn't worth the same. Some some are more efficient than others, and the early ones aren't as worth as much as the end, end ones might not be worth as much. But on average, this is what you're going to get. So if you have a 300 horsepower, five liter Ford motor, for instance, you're going to get about 20 horsepower per pound of boost. Now, if you step up to a 400 horsepower motor with, with heads and cam and intake, or you have a 400 horsepower stock motor, like some kind of LS motor or six liter, you're going to get about 27 horsepower per pound of boost. And, and on up we go. If you start with a 500 horsepower motor, you're actually gonna get 34 horsepower per pound of boost. If, you have, if you're lucky enough to have a 600 horsepower motor, it's 40 or, or more than 40 horsepower, almost 41 horsepower per pound of boost. And if you start with a 700 horsepower NA motor, which isn't unusual, especially for a big block, you're gonna get 47 and a half pounds of boost or 47 and a half horsepower per pound of boost. So as you can see, 
the more power you're starting with, the more powerful your NA motor, the more horsepower you're going to get per pound of boost. So if we take a look at that using these numbers, it's going to take more or less uh, boost to equate to the gains that we got from the intake manifold and from the cylinder heads. And, and it's very easy for, to follow along here. If you have a 300 horsepower motor and you get 20 horsepower per, per, per pound of boost, it's gonna take about three extra pounds of boost for you to offset the gain that you would have gotten if you got an intake manifold. And remember, that was only the case in an extreme example. Most intake upgrades are not worth anywhere near that much power and they certainly wouldn't be on a 300 horsepower motor but I'm giving you the, you know, the extreme example here. It may only take one pound or two pounds, but three pounds would more than offset that 56 horsepower gain. If you have a 400 horsepower motor and it would only take two pounds of boost because each pound of boost is worth more power. And, and on down the line we go for 500, it's still about two pounds, actually it's less than that. For 600, it would only take a pound and a half of boost to offset that intake change. 700, same thing, 1.25 or so if you do the math. But I just put in a pound and a half, it's easier. But so you can see, it's very easy to offset the gain that you get from an intake manifold, which is why, you, <laughs> excuse me, I usually don't recommend doing those kinds of upgrades and why the best method is, is to go get a, an, a 5.3 or a 4.8 LS from the junkyard, put cams and springs in it, and then add boost to it. Don't worry about the intake. Don't worry about the camshaft or don't worry, don't worry about the intake and don't worry about the cylinder heads because you can make all the power that you want and usually top out most turbos with all of that stock stuff. So it's not worth it. And we can take a look also at the cylinder heads. Same kind of thing since we got similar gains as we did uh, on the extreme intake test. We got about 63 horsepower with a good set of heads. And again, if you just put a set of ported heads on your 5.3 from the wrecking yard with a mild cam in it, you're not going to get anywhere near those power gains because you don't have enough motor to take advantage of it. But if you did, at the 300 horsepower level, you'd need three and a half pounds, and then two and a half at 400, and two pounds at 500, two pounds at 600, and only a pound and a half at 700 horsepower. So you can, as you can see, you can easily just offset the gains that you would get from an intake upgrade and a cylinder head upgrade with boost. It's very easy to do, and and more than likely it would take less boost than I'm showing here because both on the cylinder head and on the intake, these were extreme examples. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little adventure going down the rabbit hole on our boost versus modifications? First of all, you don't really need to make the modifications on a lot of these combinations, especially ported heads and cylinder heads. And now there are some applications like a five liter Ford. I would definitely recommend get better heads, but just go to the wrecking yard, get the GT40 stuff. On the LS combination on big block Chevys, you won't need head upgrades. Just do cam and springs and boost, and that's why it works so well. I also showed you how much power it took to offset those gains if you were to get them. Now, if you're going for all-out maximum power and you've got 2,000 horsepower with a turbo, then yes, ported heads, cam, intake, all of that stuff is definitely going to help you out because the gains that you get naturally aspirated will be multiplied under boost. But as we saw on our little 4.8, if all you're going to do is turn the boost up, you can get to the maximum output of that turbo with just a cam and springs. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.